Daily Crypto Goers, unfortunately we have to talk about terrible tether and the mass printing of the tether coins that has affected the markets. So in the last seven days, Bitcoin coming up at 0.03%. It did have a big drop a few days ago, but the strength of Bitcoin is coming back whilst the altcoins are still seeing the red as a result of the after effect of tether. Crypto Love forecasted this would happen a few days ago. Check this out. The big news yesterday was tether, tether printing $300 million. And I said how because of that, if you zoom out here, every time Tether prints money, the price drops. Tether prints, drops. Tether prints, drops. Tether prints, drops. Tether prints, we're looking for a drop. That was the news yesterday, but even bigger news today. Bitfinex covered $850 million loss using Tether Fund's New York prosecutors allege. Well done, Randall of Crypto Love, because that is exactly what happened. When Tether printed, which is right here, the price of Bitcoin plummeted. And ironically, look at this volume. This is like, I can't even express what a scam this is. Now, once that tether was printed, and it's just like the central printing press, just printing money, it's not real. It's literally like the Federal Reserve saying, here's more money. If you're new to crypto, you're forgiven for getting this wrong. You've got to learn. If you're not new to crypto, there's really no excuse for being involved in Tether. It is one of the biggest scams out there. In fact, if not the biggest scam, probably second only to BitConnect, this coin is completely parallel to what has happened in the traditional financial markets. That is, there's a printing press, they press print, and money comes out. But at least with the Federal Reserve, in most instances, they actually print cash. Whereas here, they just press a digital number and money comes out. It's no different to me doing this. I open up a Word document or any document and I say, I have, oh, let's just make up a number, hmm, $10 million. There you go, that's Tether. I've just made $10 million. And then I take that $10 million of nothing but digital money and I put it on the exchange to buy Bitcoin. And that is shown right here with this huge volume bar. This is absolutely criminal. Look how it perfectly lines up. Tether prints, volume goes through the roof of Bitcoin, which is that $10 million I just magically made. In fact, they did it with $300 million. They pour it into Bitcoin and it affects the market. Now you'd think buying all that Bitcoin pumps it up. It doesn't, it does the opposite because the money's not real. Now, 10 months ago, I released a video on the top three crypto investments to avoid and the only coin I specifically spoke about in that video was Tether. A link to this video is below or you can just find it on my channel but this is what I said 10 months ago and I'm not patting my back saying told you so. I'm saying that this is so black and white dodgy that I along with many other crypto goers have spoken about how terrible this coin is not out of like you know, go Bitcoin, go Bitcoin Cash, go Cardano. It's nothing like that. It is absolutely nothing like that. It's more like go crypto comparative to the Federal Reserve. And Tether is no better than the Federal Reserve. But this is what I said in that video 10 months ago. The next thing to avoid in the crypto space is Tether. No, Tether is the only coin that I'm actually going to specifically mention of the thousands out there, really because I have an issue with it in the whole theory of how it works. First of all, we should know that Tether is not an investment. Now, it doesn't pretend to be an investment. The intent of Tether was to allow crypto investors to sell out of any crypto coin they have, and instead of selling it for fiat currency, selling it into Tether. That way they could move in and out of certain crypto coin markets without liquidating to a fiat currency. That's the theory of it. And to assist this theory, it states that for every dollar invested in Tether, there is one Tether coin held for it. So when you buy $1 worth of Tether, there is one US dollar held for that Tether, so it can be liquidated or exchanged at any time. For that reason, it's not an investment, and this is primarily why you wouldn't invest in it, because it's not really something that makes you money. We're in the game, hopefully, to make a bit of money, and Tether is not really part of that process. Despite its intent to be used as a tool, it has in fact become a type of investment, as we can see on the charts. There is movement in that coin. It should be a flat line if it's doing what it says it's supposed to be doing. The movement illustrates that it is not doing what it should be doing. And that is why 
I don't invest in it because it is actually mathematically certain to fail. This coin operates in market failure conditions. Here is the theory. First of all, market failure is an economic term used to describe a market in which cannot operate indefinitely in the way it's operating. So let me give you a uh, microeconomic example. Bob makes a hamburger shop. He wants to sell hamburgers. He wants to be very competitive on the market. It costs him $2 to make a hamburger. But to be competitive, he sells the hamburger for $1. So for every burger he sells, he's actually losing $1. Now this is sustainable in some instances for a certain time if you've got investment or some type of capital that can enable you to do it. Also companies do it for a, a kind of a switch and bait that you come into the shop and instead of just getting that burger, you might buy $3 worth of soft drinks and that's where they can make their money on it. But essentially if we were only looking at the burgers selling for $1 while it was taking $2 to make it, that is market failure. Pushing this over in a more macroeconomic scale into Tether, Tether holds every dollar that you invest allegedly in an account for you to take out at any time. If that is the case, how do they make money? Note they can't take this money, they cannot take it and invest it into something that makes money for them. So if you think of an insurance company or an investment fund, you expect them to do that. That is, we expect to give them money and they take that money and they try and grow it for us. That's fine. But Tether is not designed to do that. Tether is supposed to be continually pinned, pegged or tethered to the American dollar. And initially we can see on the charts that that did actually happen. But I can prove to you that that's not what's really happening with the movement in that chart. So here we can see the green line represents the price of Tether. The blue line represents the market cap. That's how much has been purchased. And the orange line is comparative to Bitcoin. We don't really worry about the orange line in this example. But what you also want to look at is these bars down the bottom that represent volume. Volume, remember, is how much transactions is kind of happening, how many people are buying and selling. Volume is important to know how, in some instances, how liquid a coin is. If there's not much volume, sometimes it's difficult to sell because if no one's buying, uh, you can't sell it. So you want to be involved in a coin with good volume. Now, Tether's volume here, as we can see, the more volume that comes in, the more unstable the coin becomes, and that makes no sense. Uh, if it's doing what it is supposed to be doing, the coin should be flatlining as it was in the beginning, and there should not be these huge movements. So if you actually use this coin to tether your money so you could buy in and out, we can actually see that there's more than a 10% movement in the price from the US dollar. So it is not tethered to the US dollar, and all these dollars that are somehow held one for one it doesn't explain how the company makes money. Now, if this company spends any of that money to do any operating at all, I would imagine it would need to. There has to be people who get paid, someone designed that logo, someone manages the coin, someone speaks to other businesses. There is, in fact, a business behind Tether. And if every dollar invested is a dollar held, where on earth are they getting this money from? There's a lot of videos out there, and I actually put it to the market that some of this money is being spent. And when it comes to the time that people start selling out, you will see a huge crash in this. You will see a, a snowball effect where some people start to sell, there will be a human panic effect, all the coins will start to be sold, and suddenly a lot of people will be left without any money. So this is a time bomb waiting to go off. I don't know when it's going to go off, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, but if you've got your money in this, and you're not on top of it, and you're not ready, and suddenly that time bomb goes off, you're going to lose all your money. And even if you're not going to lose your money and you don't believe that theory that it will crash, I can prove to you that the coin is not doing what it states it should be doing, which is being pegged to that US dollar. It did do it in the beginning. Things changed, as they always do. And if your money is in this and it crashes, it's all gone. I'm concerned because that line is not flat. This company is, I reckon, dodgy. And this is the one coin that I say stay away from. Moving on to the final investment that you should avoid. So fast forward 10 months to today and the crystal ball prediction is starting to come to fruition. The company that is Tether proved what I was saying by actually admitting that they don't have a dollar held for every Tether purchased. They changed their terms and conditions just a few months ago. Crypto Lark wraps this up beautifully in this video. Check this out. The executives at Bitfinex and Tether made a series of conflicted corporate transactions in which Bitfinex gave itself access to up to $900 million of Tether's cash reserves. 
By the way, the Paradise Papers leak a few years ago revealed who the true team behind Tether was. Something, by the way, which they had previously hidden from the public. And in case you didn't know what those papers revealed, that the basically the executive team of Bitfinex and the executive team of Tether are one in the same. How very convenient, of course. Now, at least $625 million of Tether's customer funds have been swapped over without their knowledge. And that basically they put up 60 million Bitfinex shares as security with crypto capital. I mean, WTF, guys. The interesting thing here is that until all of this happened, that Tether may have actually been backed one for one. It's possible. But the Bitfinex crypto capital seizure essentially meant that Tether had to change from being backed by cash to backed by assets and debt to Bitfinex instead. So basically, Bitfinex borrows hundreds of millions of dollars from Tether, which it owns, and it pays interest to Tether the company, which by the way, it owns, and is pledging 60 million Bitfinex shares to collateralize its loan to itself using your money. Sounds pretty legit, right? So if you didn't quite get that, of which we're going to listen to just that part one more time, Bitfinex and Tether are one in the same. So let's pretend that Bitfinex is the Federal Reserve and Tether is the American dollar. Just like the Federal Reserve doesn't link, or any, not just American Federal Reserve, all banks, they don't link money to gold. In the olden days, for every dollar that you had, it was linked to gold. And that's what a banknote was. In the olden days, instead of carrying around lots of chunks of gold, the bank would issue a banknote. Fast forward to today, Bitfinex would issue a tether for a dollar held. And then as people became more comfortable with banknotes, it moved to being cash, as in dollars and cents, the paper, well back then it was paper, in Australia now it's plastic, the paper that you would hold in your pocket. And of course then they de-linked gold from that dollar you held in your pocket. And Tether has done the exact same thing. They have printed off this money saying, yeah, yeah, the dollar that you've invested is linked to this Tether and vice versa. And fast forward 10 months, keeping in mind that a crypto month is like it's like dog years. A crypto year is like seven human years. And although it took decades for money to be de-linked in fiat currency, it only took months to de-link in cryptocurrency. And that is not surprising. Things move faster in crypto. But Tether has exploited an olden day system to rob you of your money. Listen to what he said one more time. It's crucial. Lark, you've done well. You've summed this up beautifully. The Bitfinex crypto capital seizure essentially meant that Tether had to change from being backed by cash to backed by assets and debt to Bitfinex instead. So basically, Bitfinex borrows hundreds of millions of dollars from Tether, which it owns, and it pays interest to Tether, the company, which by the way, it owns, and is pledging 60 million Bitfinex shares to collateralize its loan to itself using your money. Sounds pretty legit, right? I'll link that video below and I highly recommend you watch the whole thing. It doesn't go for that long. And Lark is very good at summarizing all of this in greater detail. But my crypto brothers and sisters, what does this mean to you? This means that, as predicted, that Tether is the dodgiest coin out there. It is manipulating the market. Some people talk about the manipulation of markets. If it is true, Tether is it. Tether is it because just as I can open this Word document and say, I have $10 million, they can simply do the same thing by saying, uh, I have $300 million. They can just print any number they want and then put it into crypto and it messes up the entire crypto economy. It operates in market failure. It brings a bad name to the entire crypto space. And the reason why it does is because besides this manipulation of the markets is because people who don't understand how crypto works, when Tether crashes the market, everyone will say, see, I told you, crypto is not real. Bitcoin is a scam. And Bitcoin is not a scam because Bitcoin has a fixed supply where Tether has an unlimited supply. They keep changing the contract 
and they keep printing new money. And when they print this new money, just like the Federal Reserve does, they buy Bitcoin with it. And when buying Bitcoin with the money that doesn't exist, it creates market failure. And it creates market failure because you're printing money that's not real. It essentially creates massive inflation. We don't actually see it as inflation, but it's identical. When I pour money into an economy, you get inflation. And if you look at all world economies, you have this 2%, actually to be correct, there are four countries that don't have a fractional reserve lending and central bank that just prints money. But every other one, when you just pour money in, you get inflation. Now, if you pour money into a tiny economic space, which is crypto, because we remember we've only got a tiny market cap, when you pour 300 million into an economy that's only got a trillion dollar market cap, less than a trillion dollar market cap, you're going to affect everything, of which is exactly what happened in this instance, along with all other instances where Tether, as Randall had said at the beginning of this video, pointed out, when Tether prints, Bitcoin goes down. Randall illustrated it in this chart here. And again, good job, Randall. I'll also leave a link to this video. Watch it because Crypto Love, he's very good at his TA. He's quite quirky and funny, as I guess the best uh, YouTubers are, which I don't put my hand up for that part. But I learn from these guys who are. And as Randall said, these white arrows here show that as soon as Tether prints, does this mass print, Bitcoin drops. And this video was released before Tether printed. And Randall said, when this happens, Bitcoin is going to drop and bang like clockwork, it dropped. This is a really good example of where TA does actually prove itself. It doesn't always prove itself, but in this instance it does because this is massive human manipulation of just printing money. The lie and scam that is Tether continually proves its lack of integrity. It proves it through its bouncing charts. It proves it through its changing conditions. It proves it through the nonsense of lending itself money with its own money to its own parent company, paying itself interest with all the money that you put into it. It proved its dodginess through its continual fluidity of its terms and conditions. And when it was audited, it didn't do it with the big four. It did have an audit out there. So I, I don't know anyone who'd be in the crypto space who would be pro Tether. In fact, I take it a step further. I'm actually really concerned about all stable coins. I know I'm going against the grain here and many people say, no, there are other stable coins out there, but I'm never going to recommend any of them because fundamentally, although it's good for a trading tool in the big picture and in macro terms and in long term forecasting, they all operate in market failure. It can't work. How can I possibly run a business where I take your money, put it into a box, don't do anything with that money and then continue to run my business. Now remember, this is different to insurance companies and superannuation funds. Super and insurance say, we are gonna take your money and we're gonna invest it in all these high to medium to low risk investments and that will operate our business. And as a consumer, you're like, well, okay, that's transparent, that makes sense because you've got buildings to furnish and put people in and run and you've got to do something with that money so my super can grow. And if I have an insurance claim, I somehow need to get money from somewhere. So yes, you have to invest it. That's fine, that's a different story. But Tether never pretended to do that. Tether always said, we're gonna hold this dollar, we're just gonna lock it up and it's magically gonna be there whenever you need it. And then the terms changed and then they started printing more money. And then the charts started wiggling and moving. And then there was positive and negative correlations between the printing of Tether and the change of the price in Bitcoin. And the supply doesn't match what they're holding. And all of it is just a complete mess. So what is the solution from here? It's quite simple, guys. Number one, get rid of your Tether before you have no choice and it's gone. If you don't get rid of your Tether, you will be in a situation where the whole coin it just vanishes. It'll collapse or it will actually drop in price. It'll drop to like one cent and any dollar that you've put in there is now worth one cent or the owners and the company will mysteriously die in India and you will never ever get your money back. The second thing to do is stay away from Bitfinex. If they're gonna invest in this type of nonsense and print money against the laws of economics and the markets and real value and the vibe, if you will, of crypto. It's just the vibe of the thing. Don't be part of it. Stay away from it. Finally, when it comes to all stable coins, really be careful with what you're doing there. You'll see that other investors, and I had an 
interview with Crypto Lark just recently, check it out, it's on my channel, where he speaks about trading in and out of coins into not so much fiat currency or even stable coins, but into Bitcoin and other coins. This video has been quite frustrating for me to make. Of course, it's reassuring to have a prediction and say, yeah, I could see this was going to happen and I told you it was going to happen. I don't care about that shit. What I care about is the crypto space and economic stability. Whether that economic stability is domestically, nationally, internationally. I don't like these situations where people put money into anything and then overnight it crashes because some piece of crap centralized body whoever the hell they are i don't care i don't discriminate against their name color religion whatever if you're a centralized body and you're exploiting the markets by printing fake money and ripping off people who don't know what's happening i've got a real issue with that and i put this message out to you to try and warn you and tell you that this is dodgy tether is bad news and you need to be careful you need to run away from this there are many things that i can't get right all the time but this one this one i'm so certain of with everything i have within me i devote a sunday afternoon of my own time to tell you stay away from tether to close off you can actually see though that bitcoin has weathered the storm looking at the charts in the last seven days we do see low double digit to high single digit reds in all the altcoins and that is a chase if you will after what bitcoin has done it's not a direct correlation but it's getting pretty close in the sense that bitcoin goes south the altcoins go south bitcoin goes north the altcoin goes north and after bitcoin went south all the altcoins followed and the good news is is that bitcoin crept up a little bit we can see it's just gone that 0.01 red percent in the time that i've been making this video over the last seven days but if we look at the last 24 hours we can hopefully see some green and there we have it in the last 24 hours we can see this gentle climb back up well done to the crypto space for holding fast and shame on you tether for everything that you do i look forward to your demise on the markets i'm just scared about how many people you're going to take with you thanks for listening happy investing I'll talk to you next time. In summing up, it's the Constitution, it's Mabo, it's justice, it's law, it's the vibe, and uh, no, that's it, it's the vibe. I rest my case. That was sensational.